Hello and welcome to this GCSE Chemistry video where I'm going to help you to prioritise your revision for AQA Chemistry Paper 1. These predictions are all based on a detailed analysis of every past paper that there has been for these topics and I'm using the past to try to anticipate the future. The questions I'll be looking to answer are which topics come up the most often, which topics are worth the most marks, are some parts of topics more important to revise than others? And are there some things that haven't come up much recently, which could therefore be slightly more likely to come up in the future? If we take a look at a graph of how many marks have been available for each of the five topics that can be assessed on paper one, you can see that there is a standout topic that does carry the most marks on average across all of the papers, and that is topic four, the chemical changes topic. Beyond that, the other four topics are pretty evenly distributed, which means in terms of whole topics that there aren't any obvious areas within those four that you need to prioritise one over the other in terms of both total marks that have been available and the spread of marks across each year. Because you can see from the different coloured sections of each bar that each topic is assessed pretty consistently across all of those seven past papers. Three of the topics on paper one actually separate out naturally into slightly smaller sections. And when we do that, we can see that one of those sections really stands out. And that's the reactions of acid section from topic four. And within that, we have the titration required practical and the soluble salt preparation required practical. On average, this content is worth 17 marks out of 100 each year. And then after that, we have two topics, bonding and quantitative chemistry, tied on average worth 16 marks each year for those particular topics. And in fact, those three sections adds together to be worth a total of 49 marks. So nearly half of the paper from those three parts of paper one, which if you'd got all of those marks would have been enough to get a grade six on average across each paper comfortably and even in 2024 when the grade boundaries were a bit higher than average. Beyond that you can see that in fourth place we've got the exothermic and endothermic reactions where we find that our third required practical and then the fourth required practical comes in as electrolysis of solutions. And in terms of which topics carry the most marks, you can see those three sections of topic four, which add together to make a third of all the marks available on paper one on average. You can see the same pattern for this graph, which is showing the total marks available for each of these topics or subtopics across the seven papers that there have been. Obviously, the pattern is what you'd expect with the more important topics on the left. And as we work our way to the right, these topics are worth fewer and fewer marks. Not only that, you can see that the four parts of the topics on the right hand side are assessed less frequently, less consistently. Those bars are often quite small and sometimes Sometimes there's a big section, sometimes there's others. So in terms of what you should prioritise for consistently assessed content, those are those four bars on the left hand side. The five topics that can be assessed on paper one can be broken down into 67 small subtopics. And so this allows us to get some insight into the specific content that carries the most marks on average. And when we look at that, we can see that the top three are all to do with required practicals. The energy changes required practical to do with exothermic and endothermic reactions carries on average seven marks each year as does the titrations content, so that's both the method and the calculations. And then the electrolysis of aqueous solutions required practical carries six marks each year. And that's important because the electrolysis itself as a whole doesn't carry many marks. It's pretty consistently from the electrolysis of aqueous solutions where we get those marks on paper one. And then in fourth and fifth place, tied on four marks on average each year, is the soluble salts preparation required practical and the properties of the group one elements. And then you can see that there are seven subtopics, each carrying three marks on average each year. And I said that there were 67 topics and actually I'm showing less than 20% of those subtopics on this slide here. But in fact, together they do carry on average 
49 marks each year, which is almost enough to get a grade seven just on this small portion of those subtopics alone. So in terms of prioritizing your revision, this is a really good place to go. Another helpful thing to do to prioritize your revision is to look to see if there are any subtopics that are assessed every single year. And there have been seven papers for this paper one. And on those papers, there have been six topics that have been assessed every single year. And those are relative atomic mass and isotopes, using amount of substance to calculate the volume of gases, redox in terms of electrons, titrations, electrolysis of solutions, and reaction profiles. Sometimes it's worth looking at any subtopics that were not tested in previous years because that makes them slightly more likely to come up in the near future. And so in 2024, there was not anything about covalent bonding, atom economy or the reactivity series. And for the last two years, there hasn't been anything about the properties of ionic compounds, comparing transition metals with group one elements, graphene and fullerenes or diamond. And there hasn't been anything for the last three years about the development of the periodic table and graphite. And so that makes these topics slightly more likely to be assessed in 2025, but obviously no guarantees. If we take a look at the content assessed for the six mark questions, you can see that broadly speaking, this falls into two categories, required practical associated questions or calculations, whether those are to do with bond energies or mole ratios or gas volumes, with the few exceptions to this being hydrogen fuel cell versus rechargeable fuel cell comparison in 2018, structure and bonding comparisons, and then graphite structure and properties. So in terms of where this leaves us for 2025, obviously the required practicals have a high likelihood because they are all tested frequently. But in 2024, there was not very much on titrations. And so this could mean that a six mark question about method or calculation seems highly likely. And additionally, the energy changes method has not been tested very much since 2022. And so that could be a good six mark question. Beyond this, a potential high likelihood could be to do with the allotropes of carbon, particularly to do with the fact that diamond, graphite and fullerenes have not been assessed very recently. So in conclusion, I should repeat that these are predictions based on an analysis of the past and there's no guarantees that these patterns will continue into the future. So you should revise everything possible. But as you get closer to the exam, you are going to want to prioritize your revision. And so looking at those subtopics which carry the most marks seems a very sensible place to start, along with those subtopics that have been assessed every single year. To support you with your revision, I've got some GCSE explanation videos about all of these subtopics. There's a links document in the description where you can navigate through all of my videos on the channel. Okay, good luck everybody.